previously. God forbid someone from the villages sees you doing that, you wretch. Nobody will want to wed you. They believed a woman cannot become a minister. There was no need to send her to study. You'd be better off as a cripple from birth than bringing us shame in front of the entire village. Get out of my sight. National Museum of Ukrainian Folk Art. Today is one of the largest art museums in Ukraine and over a hundred years ago it was only a part of the Kyiv City Museum of Antiques and Arts. An exhibition where visitors can see carpets, towels, dishes and canvases is on display on 1,500 square meters. The entire collection includes 78,000 exhibits. canvas oil and a bright and usual background for the author. Katerina Vasilyevna created many works on a blue background and often on such dark ones. And plenty of flowers, all kinds of them, different colors, sizes and the blooming season. In general, the paintings by Katerina Vasilyevna feature flowers which don't bloom in the same period. This includes both garden and field flowers. This is how she expresses herself – flowers in the spring, summer and autumn. They are so well matched and in such a wonderful arrangement. It's not a garland, it's a sort of a swirl of flowers which flows out into space. That is, there is a certain perspective. When her flowers lilt, their sizes decrease. Why did the artist change the background? What terrible events did she endure before painting this picture? Why did Soviet authorities not forgive her? November 1934, led to desperation by the constant reproaches of her mother, Bilakor attempted to commit suicide. Only a fortuitous combination of circumstances allowed to prevent this fatality. Her younger brother Pavlo saw his sister enter in the river and called to their mother for help. Her mother caught up with her and said, all right, if you're such a fool, if you want, you can pay it. We won't interfere. Katerina Vasilyevna got out of the water, as she recalls later. I had been sick for a while, but then I got better. Then feet had overcooled, and this affected her health. That was the high price she had to pay to get permission for her parents to paint every day. Thus is the start of a new chapter in Bilokur's creative life. The parents gave her a whole room to set up a painting workshop. Only the chosen ones are allowed inside. The unfinished pieces were not shown to anyone at all. One of her first paintings at this stage was Flowers Behind the Fence, painted in 1935. In it and in many of other following works, a lack of professional education was visible. She knew nothing about perspective, no principles of professional painting, and she often saw that composition seemed to be upside down. She didn't have any perspective, and even when she did, the flowers seemed to float in the air, as if they were in outer space. Nowadays, scholars are surprised how this woman in a rural environment on her own managed to reach such heights in art. She applied the paint to the canvas, but it often lost its color, so in such minutes of desperation she went out into the field. Katerina had always had a symbiosis with nature and outer space. She learned from Mother Nature, and today, looking at her paintings, one understands their greatness and beauty and an equal reality. Розумієш, велич і красу їх 
ту неперевершену реальність. Researchers assumed that nature was the only teacher the artist had. Village art teacher Rihori Kalita could have helped her master oil painting. He was also an amateur painter and an icon painter. But no one taught her perspective. The lack of such knowledge was the reason why it took her a long time to create her paintings. But there were other reasons. She never made any preparatory sketches or drawings. She worked directly on the canvas. That's why, when she found the right flower, this creative process working on the painting took several years until she found one flower or another that was suitable. She thought through every composition before painting it and kept it somewhere inside her head. She paints her pictures in standard homespun cloth. Carried away with the process, she went beyond the cloth, realizing it was not enough. So she sewed additional pieces of new cloth to it and went on day to day and year to year. But in the way of her art, she sticks to her daily routine as she had to work the best tracks of land of parents. Local authorities only complicated of the artist's life. The Pilakur family hesitated to join the collective farm. This somewhat reflected on the life of Katerina. When her father asked the head of the collective farm for assassinate the plunge in their field, he replied, go put your lazy daughter to work and plough. So Katerina was forced to plough the field during the night, so then she couldn't pay during the day. Struggling against disease, the misunderstanding of villagers and the malevolence of the authorities, Katerina painted 11 wonderful pictures by 1939, but she had no one to show them to. In response, she appealed to the regional authority to come have a look at her works, but nobody paid any attention to her and nobody came to look at her paintings. And so in such a state of mind and after seeing the results of her creative work, she went in inspiration to visit her cousin. She had had a radio that Katerina regrettably did not have. A lucky combination of circumstances changed the fate of the artist. On the radio, she heard a song by singer Oksana Petrushenko, Was That Me, the Gelder Rose in the Meadow. That's about me, Katerina shouted with excitement. So she ran home as fast as she could, locked herself up in a closet, thought for a long time and wrote a letter to Oksana Petrushenko about her dream to become an artist. She put a piece of her canvas into an envelope. She hadn't thought long what to paint. It was a bouquet of Gilder Rose. She didn't know the address, so she simply wrote Kiev Opera Theater to Oksana Petrushenko. But kind people brought her the letter. When Petrushenko had read it, she was amazed. She had understood and felt how talented this person was and admitted that she needs help. Oksana Petrushenko sent the pictures to the Poltava Folk Art Center. People took interest in them. It just so happened that exactly at that time Vasil Nagai was working at the Poltava Folk Center. When he saw Katerina's drawings, he got acquainted with her and started to work on organizing an exhibition. The exhibition was held at the Poltava Folk Center in 1940. The 11 paintings by Katerina Bilokur displayed at that time in the presence of their author caught a great furor. This was the time I was called an artist, Katerina A. to her relatives with pride and dignity. Did you hear that? Literature people called me an artist. In Poltava, the painter got her hands on professional oil paint canvas and brushes, but she refused to use the latter because she worked with self-made ones all her life. She was also awarded a trip to Moscow. 
In the capital of the USSR, Katerina visited the Tretiakov Gallery and the Pushkin Arts Museum. She would stood near the paintings for hours, so impressed by the masterpieces on exhibit there. But the instruments and the trip to Moscow were not the only gifts. For this exhibition, Katerina was promised to be named a People's Artist of Ukraine. At first, after returning from Moscow, the artist could not even paint. That's how strong the impression was of what she has seen. But later, she took the brushes in her hands again. In 1941, Katerina Bilokor created the painting Field Flowers, which was a sequel to the Flowers Behind a Fence piece and a prologue to the Exuberant. In this work, a trace of perspective was noticed for the first time. In the field flowers, where they seem to diverge and in the distance, we see the blue of either twinkling water or skies on the horizon. Katerina had a lot of plans, but when the war broke out in the country, at this time the artist almost didn't work. As soon as Ukraine was liberated from the occupants, Vasil Nagai visited the artist. As soon as Kyiv was liberated, Nagai traveled to Bogdanivka. He brought canvas, paints, brought food and found Katerina and her mother hungry in a cold house. That visit had an impact, and after the war, Bilakur resumed her work with great interest. In 1944, Bilakur began working on one of her most famous canvases titled Exuberant, but it took a long three years for her to finish the painting. There were several reasons for that. Of course, she had support and brought paints from the Poltava Focus Center and later from Kyiv. She got help, but very often she lacked the required paint to finish one painting or another. Finally, in 1947, the artist compelled her work The Exuberant, the painting substantially different from her previous works, both in artistic devices and in mood. The exuberant was different in more symbiosis of Earth and the cosmos. It gave an urge to spread one's wings and fly in outer space, and that's exactly what the flowers did. Many of Katerina's works on a sky blue background and often on a very dark blue background. But the exuberant painting that she created in her last years is replete with happy colors. Perhaps this was a manifestation of Bilakur's desire for a better life for her country. There is already a foreground with large flowers, and it's sort of a perspective. It's not a garland, it's a sort of a swirl of flowers which flows out in space. That is, there is some kind of perspective. When her flowers wilt, their sizes decrease. In addition, the exuberant is pretty much the first picture painted on a professional canvas. Therefore, it doesn't have the hems that are present on many of the previous works. She showed a new artistic level as a painter. Watch in the next episode. There aren't the three speculas that gave people hope for a life. The last time her work was exhibited abroad in 1991 was in Canada, when a 100-year anniversary of Ukrainian immigration was celebrated. And Katerina Vasilevna was often reproached. It's a shame you didn't want to draw a portrait of Stalin.